Hi guys, welcome to another episode of The Digital Kitchen. Today I am joined by Gary, who is a National Account Manager for Mitchells & Cooper, and we are focusing in one of their brands, uh, the Hot Mix range. Uh, we've got the Hot Mix Pro Gastro, uh, and then we've got the Easy Gears as well. So let's put these products through their paces, have a chat with Gary, and see what we can find out. So Gary, thanks for joining us today in the kitchen um, and thank you for bringing along these products. So um, yeah, so Hot Mix, who are, who are they, what do they do, where do they originate from and where would you use them in the kitchen? We have uh, the Hot Mix brand which uh, originates from Italy. Um, the range comprises of frozen food grinding right the way through to hot food preparation and thermal mixing. The two items that we've got on show today where we'll be doing some cooking and some uh, demonstrating are the Hot Mix Pro Easy Gears, which is a frozen food processor grinder um, product, um, which will enable you to pre-prepare food, put it into beakers, that's too dissimilar to this one, and keep that in your freezer for when that product is ready to use. Who would sort of use this product? So, where would you see it? Where is its main sort of client, I guess? The product itself is um, lends itself to hotels, gastro pubs, and restaurants. Anywhere where the you have a busy, busy kitchen and pre preparation is at the forefront of the chef and their business. The machine allows you to pre prepare your sorbets, your sauces. Um, your mousses, your stocks, anything really that is something that during the kitchen day-to-day -day hours and running is, is quite intense and you want to take that away from the kitchen and the, uh, the environment. What we want to do today is show you the parameters of the Easy Gears that allows frozen foods that are pre-prepared to be ground down and portioned. It allows you to portion control what you grind. And then when you have finished with the grind and the portion, you can put the lid back on and then you're putting that back in the freezer. So it allows, the process allows you to not get any wastages whatsoever. And I guess it's great for consistency. So if you're following a certain rent menu and you've, you know, you've dialed in that recipe to perfection, you can work with this machine to give you the exact amount of grind every time to have in that recipe so you're not just guessing a couple of teaspoons and a couple of spoonfuls here you're actually getting a, an exact quantity yeah and it's also about not being able just to pre-prepare one dish or one serving you can pre-prepare 10 20 doesn't matter 30 all in these uh, 10 portions per per beaker okay so you can have a number of different um sources and what have you but in quantity yeah so then that once you've ground that off you can finish that off in a you know in a pan but very quickly you're not adding the raw ingredients and in, it's already pre-done for you and already so this sort of machine i guess we've used equivalent machines in the industry uh doing similar sort of things so the beakers for instance if i had a different sort of machine do i need to go and change all my beakers because obviously these aren't the cheapest things in the world to buy anybody who's used this sort of uh, system knows that um are they compatible across the range and things like that when when hot mix um developed the product they understood and realized that when something new was coming onto the market by introducing a new beaker or or to to to, to the with the unit that's going to create extra cost for the customer so what the what they've done is designed the beaker that can be universally used on similar products okay makes sense so if you do you know, sway the market, so to speak, then you don't have to rip out the whole lot and stuff. They don't again. have to, the customer doesn't have to buy any new beakers, they can use the their current cool. ones. So let's go back to real basics. So what does the machine, how does it work? What does it do? Obviously we've mentioned it does the grinding and the portion control, but how does it do that? What we do have with the Easy Gears, we have three options of, um, I'm going to use the word power for the, for the want of the better word, the revolution, so the amount of times that's going to really grind that product down. The advantage is that that has is that I can choose products that are heavy in fat content, heavy in starch content, heavy in water content that might all have varied uh, consistencies that are harder in the beaker. 
So what this allows you to do, it gives you three options and those three options enable you to then grind down the specific product that you have got in the beaker. Obviously the revolution's permanent on the front there on the, on the control panel. Are they user set or are they sets in stone on the machine itself? Okay, no, each, each one you can go into each uh, program and then you can have, you, it's got some versatility in yep. within each of those programs. So if you wanted the torque of the shaft or you wanted the RPM, you could slightly change or slightly increase on, on each one. I can also tell how many times that that will go down into the unit, into the product, sorry. I guess it'd be quite interesting to play around with that to see exactly what it does to the food. Because I guess the higher the RPM, the smoother your finish is going to be, uh, the deeper you're going to go down, and I guess the more coarse it's going to be. And getting the parameters right, you can really dial it in to be where you need it to be for your menu, I guess. And you can really do some interesting stuff in terms of menu development with a machine like this. This allows innovation. Yeah. So what the machine and the parameters of the machine will allow you to do is take your food in, in its form that you want it to be and let the machine develop it for you. Yep. Other machines on the industry maybe don't quite give you that versatility, um, in which case, you know, they tend to have, you have to maybe sometimes adapt your menu slightly to, to, to produce what you want to see. This machine has that extra versatility to, yep. to get out the of it what it is that you control, do, and freedom of control, yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. So we talk about how it sort of works, I guess. Is a, so I guess the beaker then would sit underneath and then from here the shaft would come down depending on what the users yeah. told it to do. Well, the machine, other than the, the frozen food options here, the machine also allows you two further options and that is to whip or to cut. So what it allows me to do is if I wanted to do a Chantilly cream, say, I could put some, um, some product, some cream into there, put some vanilla if I wanted that, a little bit of extra flavour, um, uh, some sugar, some caster sugar, or what have you, put that in there, just whip that up really, really quickly. And I mean, I'm talking seconds more than anything else. But again, you can do that in a kitchen, but this is an option for you if, if ever... Yeah, if you've got the machine. Staff, if staffing's not yeah, there definitely. or what have you. But also what we've got is a cutting mode and what this allows you to do is it allows you to take root vegetables or something that's a little bit harder and really chop that down and granulate it down. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put some, uh, what we have here uh, in the beaker, um, again, pre-prepared. We've just got some chopped carrot. Now, the thing about the Easy Gears with product like carrot, you can see it's not a smooth finish. It's not a smooth no. surface, it's very jagged, it's very up and down. The good thing about the Easy Gears is the way that the blade and the shaft are configured, it doesn't matter if that surface is jagged, if it's raised one end, if it slopes or, or what have you. This allows, allows you to grind that down easily. So what we're going to do is we're going to grind this down um, and we're going to use the cutting process. So what we're going to do here, we have none of the frozen product presets we're going to use the cutting mode here and what we're going to do is we're going to go and press that we're going to have coarse we have medium or we have fine so we're just going to stick with the medium one and then we've got a choice of airflow um, air pressure or no air if you're using sorbets or you're using something that you want to throw a little bit of light a bit lighter in your in your product maybe like a um a creamy product or or, or or a gelato then you might want to put some air pressure in or some air flow but for this all we're doing is we're cutting so we don't need any um any air whatsoever what we're also going to do is we're going to give it two revolutions so basically what that means it's going to go down into the product come back up and go back again so it's going to do it twice so we're going to locate the unit Make sure that's in, nicely firmly positioned. Then what we're going to do, we've set that up now to do two revolutions and all we're going to do now is press the start button. Now what's happening while this is working here, the shaft now is coming down, lowering into the beaker and the blades are now starting to cut that product up. It will show you here the time left, so it's giving you an indication how long that's going to take. Okay, so the machine's now telling us that it's at an end. That program that we set is finished. Go back to home on that. And then what we'll do, we'll try and open this and see the results. 
So, as you can see, granulated the carrot into a medium finish, okay? Now what we're gonna do here, we're gonna take, have a look at that, look how fluffy that is. If this was um, a sorbet or what have you, we can maybe just decide how many of those, how many portions that we want from there. We don't have to do the whole beaker, we can just do two. And by that means the, 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 the shaft will only go down at certain depth. Certain depth. Yep. Okay. Nice fluffy carrot. That machine is ground down in a minute or two. So I'm just going to do a little test here. So, so that's still very cold. So in terms of friction, um, obviously certain machines, if you do it in a blender, for instance, you can actually do a soup from cold in a blender because the friction creates heat. Heat, obviously, yes. makes the soup boils down. Whereas this, so if you're doing like a sorbet or something to that sort of degree, would that then melt the product or are you, is, it, is there a... Well, a million percent. Whenever you're, you've got high speed blades, metal blades there, with, with it, you've got heat you've got residual heat that's being passed through that metal. Now, one thing is because of the speed of, if I go back into the, the three modes there on the frozen products, because of the speed of the grind or the milling process, then the, the temperature of a frozen product at minus 18 will probably get to about minus 10 okay. using an easy gears. It, with alternative products, maybe that's not not the case. I have known maybe the temperature could drop to between two, four degrees. Okay. The problem with that is once that product is not at serving temperature, that you have to add another process in. So with the easy gears, because I'm only dropping maybe eight degrees, I can, if I wanted to, it's either at certain, it's either at serving temperature or close to it, which means it all might only take a couple of minutes while you're prepping it back in the freezer. However, if that drops anything or it gets higher, should we say, and that gets up to one, two, even minus one or minus two, you have that process of putting back into the freezer becomes longer. Yeah. So it just hinders the service time. Okay. So the easy gears, it, 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 the, the speed and, and um, the quality of blend helps re that reduce down. that. We're going to give this a, a quick wash and get it cleaned up for the next process. Okay, so now that's located, what we're going to do is go into the cleaning mode. When you're using a, a product that requires airflow or air pressure, it obviously injects air or into, into the product. So what we want to try and do is we want to just make sure that we're cleaning the pipe at the back. So you just give that a quick, you can just hear the click there a little bit. That's the second time, so we just know that that's basically just blowing air through the system, okay? So we've got an auto clean or we want a deep clean. What we're gonna do, we're gonna go with an auto clean. Auto clean allows you four options. Now you can have a blade cleaning at a fast pace. You can have a blade and the shaft at a fast pace. Or you can have a really deep clean, which takes that little bit more time to, to, to produce. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna give it a, um, the shaft and the um, and the blade a fast clean. So we're going to start that process. Now it says on there you've got 81 seconds, so you can actually see it's going to tell you tell you how long that's going to take. And all as that's doing is that's cleaning the blades and cleaning the surface. It's now telling us that the auto clean is complete. Okay, so. That's what it's done. It's really cleaned that through. It's cleaned all underneath, and that's only gonna probably need a little bit of a wipe now because the blade and the shaft has been cleaned. We mentioned before about the unevenness of the product in the beaker and what the machine will do. That was obviously on a, on a food product like a carrot, which is quite a, a, an intense color. What we're gonna do this time is we're gonna do this with ice. Now, as you can see, ice is it's a hard product. It's, it's a water-based product. Um, we have many different peaks and troughs there in, in the bowl. So what we're going to show you is, is the results of putting something like ice into the machine and what the machine will do for it. We're actually going to use one of the frozen product modes rather than the cutting mode. Okay, so we're going to use a P3. Again, there's no necessity to put an airflow into the product because all he's doing is he's grinding up some ice. And we're going to use the shaft this time and we're going to put extra torque into the beaker because of how hard that product is. We're going to do the whole beaker. So we're going to got 10 portions there. Um, we're going to um, 
set two revolutions okay and then we're going to just like i said the torque on that so how much pressure is really getting pushed down into the beaker and we're going to go with four on that now that can actually go from four up to six and i think what we might do is go five we'll go middle of the road okay so that's finished so we'll take that out and we'll just show the sort of finish that we're expecting here got some nice granular ice ready for a nice cocktail a nice flaked granular um, uh, root vegetable and we've got some nice granular ice there ready for the cocktail cheers okay so we've now just took a new fresh beaker out of the um, out of the freezer we've got in there we've got a um, a lime sorbet as you can see still quite jagged doesn't need to be perfectly flat so what we're going to do now we're going to we're going to mill this now on a slightly different uh, program we're now going to mill that on a p2 now with a sorbet don't really need a lot of airflow at all it's an ice product so again we're going to use no air we're going to have we're going to mill the whole beaker We've got some people that really like uh, lime sorbet. So, um, and then we're going to press set and we're going to keep that on three. And we're just going to press the start one. So, it's nice and easy. The controls are nice and easy, self explanatory, and works your way through the process. As you can see, what we have now is within one minute, we've now got a full beaker of milled sorbet. Now, as I mentioned before, when you've taken that out of the freezer at minus 18 degrees, you want to make sure it's as cold as possible because you, re you really want to serve this relatively straight away. This will probably take that temperature round about down to minus 10, minus 11. Okay, so now we're going to release it. And as you can see in there, it's nicely milled all that product. Look at that from frozen state, okay? On quite well, I can still peak which means that is really, really good in terms of temperature, nearly ready to serve. So if we're serving that up, apologise for the um, for the delivery of the sorbet into the glass. Not one of our best points. Bit of lime in there, and that's ready to serve at minus eight to nine degrees. So what we've got here is a product that is going to allow the chef to pre-prepare all products that he's putting onto his menu. That might be sauces, it might be mousses, it might be gelatos, it might be sorbets. Okay, so the, allowing the pre-preparation cuts down on the stress and the hassle in most kitchens. So what we have is a frozen miller or milling process that whips and it cuts and saves time. Thanks Gary for running through the uh, the hot mix there, uh, the Giaz. I guess it's one of those products you've probably seen and goes, you know, what, what can that do for me? How can it help me? You know, what's it gonna do for me in my kitchen? Why would I invest in something like this? Um, and I guess the video that we've, you know, we've run through now just quickly through the machine is just some examples of what you can do with, with such a unit. Um, and it really is you know, fascinating to see the results you can get from this type of machine. Uh, and as always, guys, you know, if you want to see any more or you want to test this sort of thing, reach out to myself uh, and I can get in touch with Gary and we can do some more testing and, uh, and see where it can benefit you and your business. Uh, but yeah, please reach out as always. So cheers for that one, Gary. So what we're going to go on now is look at the Hot Mix Pro Gastro. Um, so yeah, so Gary, what's the, uh, the Hot Mix Pro Gastro, please? Okay. So what we have here is a commercial thermal mixer. And what I want to do today is, is a little bit about explain what thermal mixing is about, and then we'll see, we'll do some cooking and we'll see how, exactly the sort of um, finishing products that we can get from it. And they're quite varied, some of which we're gimmicking a little bit for the video today, but other ones are, are purely what a chef will produce in a kitchen. Thermal mixer, is a combined heating device so it will take heating it will take mixing in one compartment the thermal mixer will chop it will grate it will blend mix stir 
steam and roast. The complete cooking machine that will enhance any kitchen. But one thing that works very, very well is pastry sections. So I can caramelize it up to 190 degrees here. So from 120 to 190, where we've got varied caramelization processes, the machine will cope with that. Now, one thing that I'm not is a chef. So what I want to try and do is try to put over the fact that this machine does not have to be used by highly qualified chefs in kitchens, okay? It's a simple machine to use and produces some real innovative and quality products. Okay, so we're now gonna get into a soup and it's a green pea and spinach soup. And basically we're just gonna cook on heat here. So we're not gonna put a time on it. It's basically when it gets to a temperature, it's gonna tell me it's done and then we're gonna blitz it and then we're really gonna show you. And what I want you to, 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 to note at the end is the color the retention of colour that the thermal mixing we've give you. It's not going to boil anything away, it's encapsulating every single bit of an ingredient in there. Got some some peas there, some petit pois peas. We've got some spinach, we've got about 100 grams of chopped spinach. Then I have a stock cube, which I'm cheating a little bit, not a chef. And then we're going to put some about 80 grams of butter in there and it's all literally just going to go straight in water about 250 grams going on and we're going to set this to 90 degrees okay so we're just going to set the temperature and we're just going to move that up to the nine zero we'll just keep that plus button put in Okay, 99, no fan, so we're, uh, no speed, so we're gonna take the speed off and then all you're gonna do is press the start button. That's, what that's gonna do now is start to sweat those products in down there and really sort of transfer flavors into one another. Again, using the thermal mixer. So the blended side on the mixer here, you've got, I guess you can use it without the heat? Or does it need to be used with heat or can you use it as a normal blender? Or? We're gonna show you that in the last, uh, last product uh, so we're gonna make sure we're gonna show you that the fact that yes it's a thermal mixer it heats and it cooks however for whatever reason you don't need to use the heat mode then we'll do something a little bit obscure oh, I'm excited to hear <laughs> and see and taste <laughs> so um, definitely taste. obviously there's more in the range that I've, I've come across so you can do ones with which chill as well uh, and with side by side on the same unit so if you wanted to make ice creams and stuff as well yeah, within the full range of um, the Hot Mix Pro, we have a two litre bowl, which this one is the small one. We go up to a 3.6 litre bowl and a 4.9 litre bowl in heat. We then have an option of sous vide where we can, uh, the chef can really sort of start to innovate in reduction. So we can start to take the air from the bowl in, in, in the vessel and start to reduce. So all your, con um, your, your comfits and your reductions become much quicker and much easier to, to, to do. Um, then we have an option of a minus 24 unit. So if you're doing delicate products that where residual uh, motor heat can, can sometimes just creep into that, then it take minus 24 you mix it so that could be you know like a, the cauliflower or it could be herbs something quite as delicate as that um, also if you wanted to bring down uh, a pasteurized product so if you're producing your own gelato in in this machine then you can take it straight out there and put it straight into a minus 24 model that's called the breeze uh, and that will bring that temperature down ready to scoop and put straight into into the freezer or if you want to serve from it later Perfect. but that also is available is as two single units or as a combo unit so okay. two vessels in one cabinet with but separately operated, separately operated. okay yes. can you store recipes on these or not or is it just a recipe as you go no there's a menu in there when okay. you can store so if you're doing something a lot yeah. so it's on your menu such as a sauce um or or in this case a soup and stuff like that then yes we, we'll just store that in the menu in the menu itself in the menu itself it's yes okay and in terms of the actual uh, rpms of the blade and stuff how how high can we go can we go for more um so you know dietary requirements when it comes to places like nursing homes and things like that is this something which will go up to that sort of level 
a million percent. I mean, this, this is sort of your basic 10,500 RPM, which is similar to that of most alternatives in the, on the market. However, this particular model has a uh, has a turbo button on there, which will give you an extra 2,000 RPM. Okay. So there should be no reason to have to pass anything after after you've brought it through on a 12,500. But then we do one at 16,000 RPM. Um, and then we do a larger vessel, but it's slightly reduced on the RPM to 8,000. Okay. But it is a 4.9 litre ball. Okay, perfect. Okay. So it could be, an as I say, for places like nursing homes and things like that, where they've got Oh, I mean, it's massive for dysphagia, uh, dysphagia patients yeah. and stuff like that in, in nursing homes and hospitals and that type of environment. Obviously, the quantities suit the care home market more than the hospital market because of the, uh, the, 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 the capacity. The capacity of the unit yes. itself. Yep. Yeah, and I guess we've got that accurate cooking you know you can do your tempering you can do your you know your chefy stuff with it as well so it sort of fits in somewhere into sort of any sector you really wanted to in theory you can use it for so many different massively you know exactly so many different uses for it it's just making sure it works for you obviously these things are an investment but we obviously we're doing a suit today which is obviously quite a basic thing to do but you, know, you can get really really chefy with it or as we're showing today you can get really basic with it so it really ticks all those boxes so it's certainly worth investing well i think what a hot mix c can provide you, you you can heat your sauces your mousses your your hot anything in there your soups and what have you once that there you can actually put that in a beaker pre-prepared Put it in your freezer and bring it so back I'm with seeing, the gear. I'm seeing a connection here. Yeah. I'm seeing a connection. <laughs> <laughs> I'm selling. See I'm what selling. I did there. Yeah. I like it. So <laughs> basically, you, you you have a process, yeah. and that process is still available in most kitchens. You'll still have that process there, but with two completely different units from two different manufacturers. Hot Mix have brought that together with two fully commercial product units. And um, just touching on the actual fitment into a kitchen, I'm guessing they're a 13 amp power supply, so, uh, normal plug and play. These two units are both plug and play. I think the, the more you get up in the RPM, the higher the motor capacity means there's slightly increased on the electricity okay. requirements. Um, the, the next one up, I think, is a uh, 15 amp unit. Okay. And then the one further up is, is in commando, commando sockets. sockets. Yeah. But then it's going to give you that you know, heat up time that you need. And but it gives the, you the, the capacities speed. as yeah. well. Exactly. You so know, because there's no other thermal mixer on the market, I don't believe, that at the moment that will give you 4.9 litres in a small yeah. thermal mixing bowl. Yeah, no, fair enough. Yeah, no. and say this, obviously the small one here, but it is very small, you know, it's very compact, so it can... It's great. Easily goes under the bench, so you don't have to continue with the work. I don't have to um, have it on the work surface. Yeah. Um, and assuming you can get extra bowls and extra um, containers and stuff. Uh, as, as for sure. Needs. Yeah. You, so you can get for allergies the extra and things bowls. like that. Mixing over. If you've got dietary requirements and somebody requires a specific diet, you can label that bowl up and use it for them and so on and so forth. I'm really saying you can colour code the handles if you need to. Um, not that we do. And what I mean is you can, yeah, pre you can, do, you can do it yourself. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. can buy multiples. You're not stuck. Exactly that. Machine, so yeah. that's, that's good. Good option. Yeah. So we've mentioned sort of accurate temperature control uh, and touched on the word sort of sous vide. So I'm guessing you can infuse with this then uh, as you would and get, you know, integrate flavors into products and in, into foods. Uh, massively. I mean, what, what we're looking at here is, is a product that allows the chef to innovate. So by allowing a sous vide option, that also coupled with an attachment, small attachment, you can use a external smoker that we that we all hot mix also produce where you can start to infuse various wood flavors into there smoked or, or, or things like this so you're sort of pushing boundaries a little bit and it just gives total consistency of that product so once you've once you've innovated a specific product then all of a sudden you you know what's in there every time it will cook it at the same because you're not on a stove or a, a, something that made the temperature range does vary two three degrees either way or what have you so yeah totally innovation and i guess the, the obvious one to mention obviously is safety as well you know there's no you know we're not exposed to any naked flames there's we're not chopping anything with night it's all been done in a, a nice safe environment so that's as i say with that lower skill set or in colleges and as well as you know training schools and things like that something like this is is great you know there's no risk of anybody pretty much getting hurting themselves or damaging themselves to a degree no you know it's no, nice and safe not not at all everything's locked in everything's totally controlled in the top here if you need to add various products you don't have to start taking lids off it can pour or you can add into there so oils or, or products like that that you, you're looking maybe a bit of seasoning if you want to do that during the course of the um, course of the cooking process yeah. 
And in terms of uh, availability, are, are these things, are we ready to go with these sort of things or is there a bit of a lead time on them? We, the we have stock and now you guys have listed both of these products on your system, you know, we're, we're, we're committed to making sure that we've got the stock so that you can and you can sell distribute them. as much as we want <laughs> exactly um, and in terms of after sales support obviously we've got the kitchen here which of course customers can come down and we can run through the machine um, do you offer any f further support shall I say when if a customer bought this uh, are they able to reach out and do training that sort of thing yeah I mean training not so much because uh, we tr what we're trying to do is back up a sale with all the relevant easy guides and yeah. stuff like this but the, sh the chef themselves are the experts on the product. Yeah, what it, it's doing. easy to use, and what they do yeah. is fast, more, much more knowledge than I could provide. Yeah. So in terms of once you know which button to press for what, it's a, a way you go. Yeah. In terms of getting the chef interested in the product, if the guys, you know, the sales guys need me to come and see a customer, I'll bring that with me. Yeah. We'll we'll do a demonstration, and we'll we'll. Yeah, because it's sort hopefully of, obviously we're doing it on a video now where we're going to run through and we're going to produce stuff to the soups and the, and the sauces we're doing. But of course, that's, you know, we can lie. We can say, ah, oh, it tastes fantastic. Oh, it's really smooth. It can't taste anything. But it's one of those products you really need to sort of get in front of and sort of almost try it itself and see the benefits it does and what it can do. And it is remarkable because I say we've done some testing on this before when we met, we met last time mm -hmm. uh, and we did uh, the pea soup. Uh, and I was amazed at the consistency and the smoothness of the actual end product without having to, to pass it. You know, certainly something like a pea yeah. soup, normally you, don't, you certainly have to pass it through uh, to get a nice smooth consistency. But it was, as I say, the color and the actual texture of it was, was incredible. So it really is worth, you know, if you're thinking about getting one of these machines, Get in front of it first, you know, come and try it because it's not one of those you're going to buy and go, oh, it's not doing what I think it will do. I think it's going to be the other way around where you'll actually be amazed at what it can do. Um, and, and that's the benefit of, of the NCC and having people like yourselves and the machines here is you can do that. You know, as I say, these are an investment. So make sure it's going to do what you need it to do before you buy it. And you can do that here. So rule of thumb, always reach out. What we've done here now is we have put the final ingredients in. We put the speed fan on four. So what that's there now, it's starting to mix the blades and mixing that through. Uh, and we're gonna do that for about 30, 35 seconds. Okay, so the machine's now beeping. That tells us it's finished. So what we're gonna do now, we'll stop that. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna blitz that down on top speed for around about 30 seconds. So we'll take the lid off. One thing I should point out is as soon as I release that lid, the machine cuts off it won't allow you then to operate that machine. And that's obviously from a safety point of view because of the blades inside. So you can see the color straight away. It's enhancing the colors without boiling out. Okay, so now we've got a nice green soup. The final um, product that we're doing not something you would normally associate with a thermal mixer and certainly not something you'd normal, normally um, associate in a kitchen. But we're gonna finish off with a nice fresh pina colada. So what we're gonna use, we're gonna use some fresh pineapple, which I'm putting in now, which is 300 grams. And yet again, we're setting new boundaries here because we've not done this before either. Then we've got 300 grams of coconut oil and um, coconut milk i'm sorry we have 150 grams of ice cubes and just as a taster a little bit of rum i'm gonna put the lid on and we're gonna blitz that on top speed which is number nine number ten and we're gonna set that for about 30 seconds and we're gonna rock and roll Gareth, thank you very much for coming down and showing us these great products, really, and talking us through the range. Um, we're going to go now and uh, enjoy these uh, lovely pina coladas. But, guys, thanks for watching. Gary, cheers. Thank you very much. Cheers, Chris. All the best. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, for more information on the digital kitchen at the NCC and facility hire, visit the website or give us a call. Details on this are below. And don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for regular updates on the digital kitchen. Thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next one.